Enrique Freeman, it's official. It's a two-way deal with the Pacers sorting out a lot of the other dominoes of the back of the Pacers roster, plus other details that signal what's happening with the Pacers and a ton of Pacers news. You need to know you'll get it all today on the Locked On Pacers podcast. You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, y'all? Happy Tuesday and welcome into another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers. As always, my name is Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and SI. And today, the roster, we're diving in again because the Pacers made a move five days ago now, but they still did it. Enrique Freeman officially with the Pacers, and it's officially a two-way. What does that mean? Why is that the decision that's made? What could it spell for other players on the roster? Is this officially official, the final stuff? Cole Swider is official, and some details there that actually are sort of interesting. Oscar Sheebway, not a Pacer. In fact, delaying this episode by accident worked in my favor, which I can explain why regarding Sheebway. And then a ton of news. To get to today, a lot of former players, but some new stuff. Johnny Burphy saying some cool stuff. Uh, we'll dive into all of it today, but starting with the headliner. On the same day, press release from the Pacers. They've signed Cole Swider. We knew that was coming. That was reported. And they signed Enrique Freeman to a two-way. Uh, that was not something that was known until a couple hours before it became official. It's a one-year two-way. I put that in one of my stories about it uh, after it came out. So all one year, two ways for the Pacers um, this year. And if you recall, you know, the interesting part about this, for lack of a better term, delay, right? Tristan Newton, Quentin Jackson got their two ways late July. And that signaled to me, uh, th there could have been other reasons for this, but w w what I thought that meant when they didn't do all three two ways at that time was that they were actually considering Freeman for, for more than a two way because he was good in summer league. They just drafted him. He's going to get something. Right, you don't draft a guy and then they get nothing. What what happened with Mojave King last year is unbelievably rare, right? Like with actual meaningful players, I think Isaiah Hartenstein's the only one where they get drafted and don't sign a contract with the NBA team. So Freeman was getting something. So in my head, when he didn't get announced with the first batch of guys, it's because they were considering him for a final roster spot. Then in comes Cole Swider, who's also competing for that. We'll talk about details that are interesting about that in a second. And so in my head, it was like, well. I suppose you could put Freeman on a deal where he could compete for a roster spot, but if he doesn't get it, then he just gets a two-way. Why would you want that if you're him? You know, d dynamics can change in camp. You'd rather come in with the contract. So a two-way made the most sense, I think, once the Swider stuff came in. Um, when I was talking about it, it was pre-them deciding to add Cole Swider to the mix. And so given the information of the available players in the mix, Freeman, I even talked about Shibway, I would have, I would have given at that time. Freeman the last spot, and then figured out Kendall Brown or the last two-way spot a different way. But with the addition of more players and more roster competition, this does make sense. They needed a two-way uh, front court player. She has gone. Uh, Kendall Brown got promoted. So it would have been someone else if it wasn't Enrique Freeman. It makes sense. And he played very well in summer league. Certainly somebody to keep an eye on this season. That type of player typically puts up numbers at the G League level. And I assume it will be similar to last year in the Pacers system where their two-way players get a lot of burn in the G League, over 30 games for Shibwe, uh, over 50, I think, for Isaiah Wong and uh, Quentin Jackson and Kendall Brown split that time. But they also got, got their numbers up there because two things are reality here. One is the Pacers are deep, right? So even if there's injuries, it's hard for those two-way guys to just slide in all of a sudden, like in years past when Brian Bowen or Amita Brahma or whoever it was for the Pacers got out there. Uh, and two is something beneficial here is the Pacers and Mad Ants for one more season before the Noblesville Mad Ants exist and that stadium's done will share facilities, right? Practice and and uh, game arena. So it's very easy for the two way players to be with the G League team and kind of at the same time the NBA team. It's very easy to oversee all that. Like they're they're literally connected buildings. So uh, it's very easy for those development opportunities to happen. That's why it's easy for the Pacers to make G League assignments, right? Like. Hey, walk across the street, go play a game. So uh, it's a really good setup in that way, uh, their G League setup is. And so it's a good spot for Freeman, I think. Um, they already prob seem to like him if they're doing the delay of signing. And that's just my interpretation of 
what this could be. So two way for Enrique Freeman. That's that's probably the right choice. Uh, but you know they the Pacers almost every year have promoted someone from the Mad Ants up. Uh, they, they have non guaranteed deals this year. They could be a trade candidate team because their finances all sorts of stuff. Last year's Kendall Brown, Edmund Sumner, Alex Poitras, Ben Moore. I could go on and on uh, through the years of Mad Ant promotions. Gabe York. Um, so just keep uh, Terry Taylor. Dwayne Washington, I don't need to keep the list going. You guys know this if you keep up with the Mad Ants. So if you play well, the Pacers will reward you, right? They, they keep up with their G League program, and it has a good culture. Terry Taylor came back playing for the Chicago Bulls a day early and went to watch the Mad Ants play because he liked the program and the culture. Like, that says a lot about what the Mad Ants are doing. I'm not going to wax too much G League, G League poetic today. I'll just say good, good for Enrique Freeman. He's in. It makes sense. Uh, and I wouldn't lock anything in yet, though. I'm going to going to jot in pencil for a second, just because there's competition, right? If it was very obvious who the 15 guys are, I wouldn't be talking like this, but you know, Cole Swider got signed, and there's a detail in his deal that I think is interesting that I want to get to in a second, but it, the, the big picture is it, there's, there's some sort of competition for the last roster spot, and I'm assuming the top 14 are set. James Wiseman's partially guaranteed. James Johnson's partially guaranteed. Maybe they're not air quotes set. I would say they're going to be on the team because they have guaranteed money. Kendall Brown has no guaranteed money unless he makes the team. So him and Swider, who's also fully on guaranteed, in my head are battling, air quotes, for a roster spot. But hey, let's say Enrique Freeman, who's on this two-way, is amazing in training camp. And he's better than those two guys. Well, great. They could just convert his deal to a regular deal, and he could still get the spot. That could, in theory, happen with Tristan Newton or Quentin Jackson as well. Freeman uh, would be the most likely one for that to happen with because he played the best so far for the Pacers. That doesn't mean he will play the best again, but of the available sample size we've seen of these guys recently. So that is still possible, right? I'm, I'm not going to rule out anything. That that doesn't happen very often, but it is possible. What I would assume the most likely outcome is, is the top 14 that look like the top 14 will be on the team. One of Swider or Kendall Brown will get the final roster spot. And then the three two ways are set as Quentin Jackson, Tristan Newton, and Enrique Freeman, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. And stuff can always change if something crazy happens somewhere else. Uh, remember, they had an open spot two years ago into camp, and they didn't. They had the open two-way slot. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, Trevlin Queen got a concussion in Philadelphia. He was the G League MVP last year. He's a free agent. We can give him a two-way, right? You just never know what can happen between now and the start of the season. So I'm not penning in anything with the back of the rush. That'd be stupid. But I think there's still decisions to be made about anyone, even guys who already have agreed to deals because they can be converted, because they can be changed. Um, and that's a good setup. Competition is good. They had competition for minutes and rotation spots last year. That's probably less so the case this year. But literally for making the team or making a certain contract spot, it's always good. Uh, Kendall Brown, Cole Swider, probably going to be the, at the center of that, given that the two-way part of it, probably less of reality for them. In fact, again, Cole Swider details, you'll all go, oh, interesting when I talk about them in the second segment. But I think that, that, that the, the competition they're building makes sense and will be a, a minor but still revealing and worth watching storyline in training camp and Enrique Freeman, in theory, part of it, right? In the mix, has the two-way. If he flames out, whatever, he's on the two-way. They drafted him. They want him in their system. He played good in summer league. And if he's great, you can think about it still. You can do those conversions. You can make the waivers you need to to set your team in motion. Stinks for the guy who gets waived. Such is life. Such is how the roster battle game works in the NBA, but that's 19 for the Pacers. That's three, two ways. That's 15 plus one really standard guys. Pretty much done. Maybe they bring another guy into camp, but in the Carlisle era, um, I, I guess I don't even know if that's just a coincidence, but in the last three years, they've only had one extra guy in camp total. Uh, they had David Oster, or two extra, excuse me, David Osservitas and Langston Galloway. So very few extra guys in camp. We'll see how many they carry in this year. Let's talk about something interesting about Cole Swider's contract plus Oscar Sheepway. I was going to talk about him being in the mix, but he's not in the mix. And I'll explain why in this next segment here on Locked on Pacers. Hey, everybody. Before we get to all that, we have to talk about the lovely folks over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. Plus, with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time 
you'll get your money back. Plus, with eBay's Guaranteed Motors, excuse me, with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay's Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Back here on Locked On Pacers, thanks for making us your first listen today and every single day as I just forgot how to read for a second. Make your second listen, Locked On Women's Basketball. Missy Hydrick and I talked about Team USA men, Team USA women, the fever coming out of the break. They play again on Friday. They had some crazy games going into the break. If you want the latest on all that, because Women's Hoops is back in like two days, finally. Non, non-international Women's Hoops is back in two days, finally. Locked on women's basketball. Missy's the best. Love t- chatting with her. Let's talk about the ripples from Enrique Freeman's deal, right? He was going to be in there in some way. Um, Oscar Shibwe is the direct one that everybody was the most curious about. G League rookie of the year, 16 rebounds a game with the G League. Good, good rebounder. Needs some juice elsewhere, obviously. He was better at passing in summer league. That matters. Um, got a qualifying offer, so he was a restricted free agent. July 13th came and went which means he was still a restricted free agent. Um, and then when Freeman signed, a lot of people asked, hey, what does this mean for Oscar, right? He's a qualifying offer. He could sign it right now and be on a two-way. That's true, uh, sort of. So those have light guarantees in them. So that, that that's not actually how it would have gone down, but that's possible. So that was the mix of Shibwe. Uh, And in the end, what happened is he was a restricted free agent at that time. His Once, once July 13th passes, so before July 13th, a team can pull a qualifying offer for any reason, but just the team, no decision involvement with the player. That happened to Cole Swider, ironically, with the Heat. He was a restricted free agent. His got pulled like on the 10th or something. After the 13th, the player has to be involved in that decision. A lot of times that's because qualifying offers have guaranteed money in them, right? Um, so Shibwe could have, in theory, gotten like $77,500 if he had signed his qualifying offer before. It wouldn't have been smart, whatever. Um but once they had all their two ways filled, I actually found out the Pacers pulled She West qualifying offers. He was no longer a restricted free agent. They had no two way room for him. They already have an end of a roster battle. They already have three centers. They have power forwards who could play centers. And I was going to put this episode out Monday. My plan was oh, they signed Enrique Freeman. I pre recorded with Dustin Lopirak, whatever. I'll do it Monday. Then Team USA was awesome. I'll do it Tuesday. Thankfully, in the end, that works out because Oscar Shibwe signed a two way with the Jazz on Monday. So he is definitely out of the Pacers orbit now. He's on a different franchise completely. The Jazz waived someone else uh, to create a two-way slot that day, and now Shibwe has a new home. Once he became unrestricted, that was a lot easier. It was in the press release. They signed him. So the Pacers don't have match rights. He was a restricted free agent at one time this summer. No longer the case. So the Jazz now have Oscar Shibwe. He's on a two-way deal there. They have a lot of front court depth. Walker Kessler, John Collins, Lowry Markkinen, just to name a few, and Kyle Filipowski, they just drafted. Um, it's you know, it's similar to the Pacers. Not that's a deep team, but guaranteed money is guaranteed money. Perhaps he likes that situation better, and a tanktastic spot could be better for a two-way guy than a team contending. Uh, and if he switched, like maybe he just wanted to switch realities, right? He switched agents. You just never know the why, but switching agents right at the beginning of free agency um, generally assigned to me that they're looking for either something more or something different. And that is the reality here. I think I, especially after how Quentin Jackson closed summer league, would have done the same thing as the Pacers with the two A slots. I said as much when talking with Caitlin Cooper about it four or five weeks ago, and that's what happened. And she weighed deserving of a home, great rebounder, but uh, the Pacers system, what they need of their bigs, what he does, do not marry up perfectly. And so another team developing him makes sense. Good luck to Oscar Shibwe in Utah. I understand the disappointment from fans, but I think I truly think, and I said this before, even have it, the Pacers made the right choices along the way with this spot. I get it, though. The, the, the rebounding numbers are ridiculous. <laughs> Just unbelievable sometimes. I mean, I've, I've seen that guy get 20 rebounds in one game, sitting two feet from the floor. He just gobbles them up. It's unbelievable. But a lot of other stuff needs some work there, and Utah can, can work that along. They have a good G League uh, program. As well, we'll hear from one of their two-way players this week here, actually. Um, so Oscar Shibwe, that's the last time, at least for this summer, you'll hear about him here on Lockdown Pacers because he's not on the Pacers anymore. He's on the Utah Jazz. Congrats to him. Going on draft and getting a two-year career is great. Um, and I understand why fans might think that that's a mistake from the Pacers. 
I happen to, to not think that's the case, but I, I get it. The numbers are ridiculous. I wrote a whole story about it, but I, I would have done what the Pacers did as well. So here's the other interesting thing that happened from the Pacers from a back-end roster perspective. They signed Cole Swider officially. If you remember when this got reported, it got reported as a one-year non-guaranteed minimum contract set on this podcast. I, I didn't hear it was an Exhibit 10, but my radar was up because that's what an Exhibit 10 is. It's a non-guaranteed one-year minimum contract. And so I wondered if we would see the Mad Ants trade to acquire Cole Swider's G League rights, and then the Pacers would sign him because then they have his G League rights. If they cut him after camp, whatever, he's still on their G League team. They can watch him. He can get better. Um, that did not happen. No Mad Ants trade announced. No Mad Ants transactions for a while. They're a really empty slated team. And they signed him. Cole Swider is signed. So the Pacers don't have his G League rights. And so he's he is actually on a one-year non-guaranteed minimum contract. And now we know there is no Exhibit 10 language. So Cole Swider's deal can't be converted to a two-way, does not come with a bonus if he's waived and ends up with the, in the G League. Wouldn't be, would not be with the Mad Ants, right? So that's interesting to me. Whoa, Exhibit 9 means if he gets hurt, whatever, patients aren't liable. That's in most deals like this, but not Exhibit 10. So that really suggests to me that they're having him compete for roster. But this isn't Cole Swider. Come, come to camp. See if you fit our system. Maybe you could be a two-way. Maybe you could be a really good player for our G League team. Look at this. Our facilities are awesome. They're connected. You get a lot of burn there. We need guys. No, no, no. This is truly, you are of the 15th guy or you're not on the team. Right? That's that's remarkable. That's kind of telling to me because he actually has played in the NBA for two seasons. And so he's not competing for... Four spots, potentially, if you want to count two as whatever. He's competing for one. The last, or how many roster shots come available? To me, it's one, right? So had it been Exhibit 10, a little fluffier, a little more wiggle room, a lot more stuff can be moved around. Now, Cole Swider, in my head, it's like, oh, they really think this is a competition for the last spot. It's Kendall Brown or it's Cole Swider. Or maybe Freeman is better than both of them in camp, and they can figure it out from there, or Tristan Newton or whatever. But the, the most clean path is, oh, Wow, Cole Swider's just better. And like he has a skill. He can shoot it like really well, right? He has in the G League for years. And he did it in Summer League again. So that alone is, you know, Rick Carlisle talks about skilled size all the time. You know, Kendall Brown is more athletic than him. He's more athletic than those guys on the Pacers roster. But what, what does that amount to? What has that amounted to, right? That will be the question. If Kendall Brown comes into camp and he's shooting the lights out or that athleticism's letting him defend or he's passing or he's getting to the rim whenever he wants, yeah, keep that guy. Really athletic, toolsy, 21-year-old. Awesome. That's great. Uh, if if not, if he's still kind of like eh, wishy-washy, the shooter makes sense. I've said that the Pacers have needed, could use another shooter all summer. And maybe Swider would even play, but the, you know, their, their shooting depth kind of went in reverse. They lost McDermott. You hope for if he can be somewhat of a shooter, but maybe not as a rookie. You just never know. So it does make some sense to me to bring in a shooter and say, come compete to be on our team. And if you're close wider, you're willing to take a non-exhibit 10 one year non-guaranteed minimum because you probably think you have a good chance to make the team, right? So all of these factors coming together makes me think Swider's got a good shot to be someone we talk about this season as like a Pacers rostered player. If he had an exhibit 10, I would think a little differently about it. But no managed trade, no exhibit 10 language. Cole Swider, exhibit nine with the Pacers. The back end of the roster looks pretty set. They're up to 19 guys, right? So there's six, the 15 roster, including Kendall Brown. Swider makes 16 and three two eight. That's 19. Uh, as I said, and when I did the moves, they could still make sure they can carry up to 21 in the offseason. So in theory, they could sign two more exhibit tens. Tommy Nagel get one. Josiah Jordan James, assuming reports are true. Um, who knows if those guys will be in camp or not, or how the rest of that flow will go. But that is that's the reality, and that's where the Pacers are until they aren't there until camp starts and they can watch these battles for minutes, for spots, for money unfold. Now let's get to some news. Heck, yes. Uh, I think that's it. I think you might not see any Pacers roster news outside of maybe like a TJ McConnell extension question mark report or not, or Isaiah Jackson. That's kind of it. It's all just extensions and options the rest of the way. And let's talk some news, some former players, some current stuff, good stuff from Johnny Furphy on a different podcast. Let's talk about all of that for the Pacers.
Back here on Locked On Pacers. Thanks for making us your first listen today. And every single day, check out Locked On Jazz for your second listen. The Markinen extension. They signed Filipowski, Johnny Juzang, Drew Eubanks, Vivi Mikhailuk, and now Oscar Shibwe. A lot has happened for the Jazz in this week. So rare that it's in August, but such is life for their contract deadline life. David Locke, the host of Locked On Jazz. We'll have more on the Jazz, their roster, what it all means, how it all comes together. Fascinating summer that they had just because of the deadline reality that Markinen's extension put on them. We continue here on Locked On Pacers with news. Lots of it. Why some of this matters, some of it doesn't. Some of it's just news that happened that I want to talk about. Um, Jeremy Lamb. Remember him? Pacer for three seasons technically. Retired after 10 seasons in the league. Injuries got him. You hate to see it. The worst reason to see a guy um, retire. Jeremy Lamb, remember, perfect timing for him to come in. Uh, Old Depot is hurt. He could start. Phil Ennis is starting too. Old Depot would come back. He'd be a great bench piece. And him and Depot overlapped for like four games. <laughs> Old Depot came back. Lamb got hurt in Toronto. Tore his ACL and MCL in the same game. Was never the same player. Was in the trade for Halberton. Got a little bit of burn with the Kings. Never back in the league. I actually was higher on him than the fan base in his fit the first season he had. And then lower on him <laughs> than the fan base for the rest of the time. I think he was a good McMillan player and a not very good Bjorker or Carlisle player. Uh, ten-year NBA career lottery pick, got to help the Thunder get to the conference finals in his second season. Good player, ten-year pro. That's a good career. Congrats to Jeremy Lamb. Um, he has uh, retired. Victor Oladipo. Speaking of uh, IU Hall of Fame bound, Victor Oladipo headlining their 2024 class for the Indiana Athletics Hall of Fame. Congrats to Vic. I don't need to tell you his Pacer story. Remarkable for a hot second, over 20 points per game, 13 All NBA, most improved player. Of course, a legend with the Hoosiers except for when they played Syracuse that one year. Ugh. Ugh. They won a Big Ten championship. I can't be too mad. Love that team with all my soul, uh, except for how it ended. That sucked. Uh, Well-deserving for Vic, though. I mean, terrorizing defender in the Big Ten. Really grew into a score. Crean helped him develop quite a bit. Uh, the right spot for him, the right school for him. He fit in well culturally as a player. Um, congrats to Victor Oladipo, who had a great time with the Pacers. I wonder if we'll ever see him again in the NBA. Injuries like with Jeremy Lamb have totally changed his life and derailed so many things that were going for him, but well-deserved IU Athletics Hall of Famer. Johnny Furphy on the Pacer Roos podcast. Well worth your time. Uh, Alex Riley, who was here two Fridays ago, he hosts the Pacer Roos with Webby and Justin, and they had another one on. So Johnny Furphy joined them. So all Aussie accents all the time. Uh, and Alex teased that show on this podcast, remember? So some of you probably already heard this. Really good. About 20 minutes of Johnny Furphy talking about Summer League, about being drafted, about going to Kansas, playing on Australia, all sorts of kind of whining stuff about his career and the Pacers specifically. The most illuminating part, and the part I would suggest you listen to, I don't know how far in it is, but if you can listen and hear the questions. They ask him about the draft and falling, right? Because one of the few green room guys, in fact, one of only two, who didn't get picked the first night. It's a two-night draft. You have to sit on it. Look, that sucks. The last guy picked from the green room. He talked about how this is putting a chip on his shoulder, right? He, he, will, he will remember that feeling. He said, I'm walking into this with a bit of chip on my shoulder. I've been through that, had my eyes open a bit walking into things. I think it's worked out for the better. His full quote on the draft was, bit of a crazy night. Don't exactly know why. It happened with regards to the slide, um, noting that he cited like cascading effects of certain guys falling and injuries, and he didn't really work out for some of these back-end first-round teams. He thought he'd go higher than that, and it all came together, too, not getting picked in the first round. I don't want to spoil too much. Listen to it on the Pacers podcast feed. It's very good. Um, talk about his brother and other sports and the Pacers and coaches, Summer League. It's really good. Uh, Furphy, very revealing and cool to hear him. I think that's his first since Summer League interview. Since joining the Pacers, it's good stuff. Highly recommend. Um, Mojave King, I mentioned him a few times this summer. Before I realized he signed in, this is the news, he signed in New Zealand like a while ago. He agreed to join the New Zealand Breakers. I wondered if he'd be in the mix for a two-way or a spot on the team. He was drafted, if you recall, by the Pacers 47th overall in 2023. He's playing in New Zealand in the NBL for the New Zealand Breakers, one of two guys with NBA slash GD experience on his team. They do like this imports number thing. I'm not going to get into the NBL too much, but um, cool for Mojave King. That's probably the best spot for his development to be overseas, get paid somewhere else, get more minutes, get the ball. Doubly cool for this specifically is the Breakers are playing against NBA teams in the preseason. I don't remember who their exact schedule is, but there will be a chance to watch Mojave King and see his progress in those two games. Is this someone the Pacers should be paying attention to next year? Should he, if he comes back to the NBA, what's that all going? 
to look like that does happen, right, guys? But like Sasha Vizankov just comes over all of a sudden, right? Like it just happens at some point. So uh, worth keeping an eye on that, how he does in that league, how he does in those preseason games. Is he ready for that action? You know, he was hurt so much last year with Mad Ants. It's hard to tell exactly where he was. Uh, so we'll see where that pick shakes out. But New Zealand breakers officially for him. I was wrong to suggest he could get a roster spot or two-way, but I did not realize he literally was on a team or had agreed to uh, spot the team already. Speaking of overseas agreements, in NBL, Pedro Bradshaw, uh, none of you remember him. I do. I thought he was always very good. Uh, he was with the Mad Ants last year. He could really over 40% the last two years from deep good defender can really move. He is headed to Australia also. Uh, I guess not the same. New Zealand is where Mojave Kings headed. Um, Bradshaw is headed there as well to the Cairns Taipans. I hope I said that name right. Uh, so two X Mad Ants in the NBL. Again, I always thought he was pretty good. Uh, Jordan War is headed overseas. Jordan War is headed to Turkey. His, his new team is crazy. Uh, crazy good, I mean. Jordan Wara did not stick after that time with the Raptors. He was he, His best time was with the Pacers, right? He had that crazy 13 points per game stretch to close that season. But um, it's just tough with that kind of player, right, to find a spot, especially at his age of 26 now. Um, he's headed to FS in Turkey. Uh, Elijah Bryant, Roddy Bobois, Shane Larkin, Dan Otoru, Vincent Poirier. I just looked at all this stuff. Stanley Johnson, a lot of NBA guys on that team. Cool spot for Jordan Wara. I still think he has NBA ability. I'm surprised that he's going overseas, but like we're at the pretty close to the end of the rosters. I was talking with somebody going through every roster situation over the weekend. Like there's like nine true roster spots left in the league, right? Doug McDermott, O'Shea Brissett, just to name some ex Pacers on a team, like fighting for spots if they want to play next year. Uh, Jordan Wara headed overseas. Also, one more, uh, not as exciting, didn't actually play for the Pacers, but was last with the Pacers. Fergon Korkmaz is headed to Monaco. I uh, remember the Pacers waved him. They got him in the Buddy Heald trade. I wondered if he'd be on the team. He was not. Him and Corey Joseph waved the same day. Uh, off he goes to Monaco. My God, you thought Jordan Wara's team was loaded. Monaco has Korkmaz, was a good NBA player. Elliot Kobo, John Blossom Game, Nick Kalathis, a legend and a good NBA player. Donatus Mani Yunus, good NBA player. Peter Cornley, who played for the Nuggets for two seconds. Papa Giannis, lottery pick. Mike James used to play in the playoffs for the Nets. That team's crazy good. Korkmaz didn't do much with the Pacers. Not a lot of time there, but he did. He was last with the Pacers uh, in the NBA. And the last news item, I am happy with this. I get why fans, maybe players, would take it as a slight. Pacers not playing on Christmas. And some more leaked games. They do not play on opening night either in the NBA. No surprise there. Uh, Christmas slate. They're the only conference finalists not playing. Timberwolves play on Christmas. Mavs play on Christmas. Celtics play on Christmas. Timberwolves play opening night uh, for the whole league according to Elise Shams Trania. No Pacers on Christmas. Uh, of the of the conference semifinalists, five of the eight made it. No Christmas for the Thunder, which that one surprised me the most, I think, of any team to not get one. Uh, the Cavs, okay, and the Pacers. So no, no Christmas. Pacers still haven't played on Christmas since 2004 when they played Detroit. Crazy long ago. Um, selfishly, I don't want them to play on Christmas. I want to enjoy that day with my family. But I get why fans view it as a respect or popularity thing and i get why players view it that way too hey we're good we're ascending we're popular that's great let's put us on tv uh no christmas for the pacers spurs knicks is one game wolves mavs Sixers, celtics lakers warriors and nuggets Suns. so it's either teams that were great last year or teams that have a star uh on them right now duh so very obvious stuff i think by the league to do it the way they did the spurs dealing one without like an a current Star or success, but Wemby's going to be there. Makes all the sense in the world to put him on TV. If Pacers have another good season, perhaps, but they made the conference finals two years in a row in the Paul George era and weren't on Christmas then either. So we'll see where that goes. Again, I personally am <laughs> happy with this arrangement, uh, but I understand why fans and potentially the Pacers are not. All right, that's all the news. We'll get to more later. Miles Turner just did a podcast appearance. Haven't listened to it yet. That'll be on the next one of these. Um, Obi Toppin had a camp, lots of stuff. That can still come in the future. Draymond Green's been talking about guys. So on the Pacers, a lot's still to come in the news front. We'll save that for later episodes when we have a segment to fill. Instead, I'll tell you that tomorrow we're probably talking about rotations. It seems obvious what the Pacers rotation could or should be, but exact minutes distributions, who should play with who, all that sort of stuff will get a little more in the weeds this year. Then two days from now, it'll be a player, um, not a Pacers player, but someone who played with Tyrese Halbert on Team USA. Uh, not like a stud. And then Friday, we'll talk. Uh, uh, we'll start the best position series. I don't know what to call it. 
Uh, best season by players at a certain position for the Pacers ever. We'll start with point guards this week. Should be fun, but I'll actually be on vacation the rest of this week, so we'll see if that's actually what Friday's episode shakes out to be. Um, so if you hear travel stuff, travel setup, that's why. Last vacation of the year probably for me, so looking forward to that. Um, I think that's every admin thing you need to know about the podcast for the rest of this week. Hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Uh, and are informed about the back end of the roster. I'm on Twitter at Tony R. East. The show is there at Locked On Pacers. Or if you need to ask me anything, that place or commenting down below on YouTube is a great way to do that. Thank you all for listening today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We will see you tomorrow.